you can't keep moving or you can't excel if you're staying in your comfort zone and to step out of it is going to be scary, but it's always worth it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Awesoming's podcast, where we highlight people pursuing their definition of, you guessed it, awesome. So buckle up and get ready for some more success story adventures and failures from Kentucky's tech and entrepreneur community. Hey, what's up there? I've never done that before. That was nice. Welcome back to the uh, the Awesoming Podcast. I'm sitting down with two lovely young ladies, both out of my league. <laughs> <laughs> and there are some of our team alpha interns, and they're the sweetest girls. Today we have Kara Smith. I don't have a nickname for you, and Lindsay. Who, Lindsay? We're actually going to be interviewing you. I'm really mm-hmm. doing an intro. I might jump in with some questions, but really. Sweet, sweet Kara is going to be running this episode and getting uh, getting her stretch the old mill. I don't know if that's a thing, but whatever. <laughs> so real quickly, uh, I know this, this audience is mostly young entrepreneurs and people who are vested in the entrepreneurial community. So we're going to have one of our team members, Kara Smith, interviewing one of our, really one of her team members as well on Team Alpha, our internship at Awesome Inc. And talking about the the purpose of start, starting a business, being a young entrepreneur, being a young stallion, <laughs> some may say. And from my perspective, I'm really excited to hear from these two what they have learned about entrepreneurship through our internship program at Awesome Inc. More importantly, the people they've gotten access to and exposure from and uh, how they're applying what they've learned. And so if you are an employer, I hope that you listen up because... These are the people that you will be hiring potentially. So this would be some good wisdom and uh, hearing people what they've learned from their internship experience. So with that, Kara, if you want to be British, I'm not going to, I'm not going (laughs) to say no. Hello guys, I'm Kara. (laughs) Yeah. Why don't you give a little insight into, um, into your background, what you've done here at Awesome Inc. And uh, then I guess we can start talking to Lindsay a little bit. Sounds great. Um, So, hey guys, my name is Kara. Um, people call me Care Bear, Caramel, Carousel. What's your um, favorite one? I've never heard that one. I don't like Care Bear because I feel like it's too basic. Um, what does basic mean? People always say that. <laughs> I just feel like it's bland. So I it's, don't know. It's, okay. Basic it's so is just average. like overused, yeah. average. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really know. I, I feel like our generation makes words up and then kind of doesn't <laughs> like create a definition for them yeah, that's a little great. bit, which I kind of like, but... Um, yeah, I just graduated from the University of Kentucky with um, a major in uh, or a degree in integrated strategic communication um, and then a minor in writing rhetoric and digital studies. Um, one of my biggest passions, though, is art. Um, and I want to hopefully start um, a business to sell my art. Um, my thought process behind this podcast episode was to kind of talk a little bit about starting a, your own business, um, how to get there, and then what you do once you have it. Um, and I was really inspired about all of this to start my own business after meeting Lindsay at Awesome Inc., um, who has her own business. I'll let her tell you a little bit about that. Um, but that's kind of my background a little bit. I'm going to hand it over to Lindsay and kind of let her introduce herself so that she's not just kind of awkwardly sitting here listening to us talk a little bit. That's great. Also, make sure you include some nicknames. Oh, I don't have very many nicknames, but I'm Lindsay. Um, a lot of people here call me Grass. Uh, that is my last name. They just call me Grass. I kind of like it. Um, or Lens is another classic one. Some people call me Trends. <laughs> because of trends by lens, which is what we'll be talking about today. But I also just graduated from University of Kentucky, similar to Kara. I have a degree in integrated strategic communication, but my minor is in digital media design. Um, but yes, my business is trends by lens. And my main focus is just thrifting and repurposing um, old clothes I really just want secondhand clothes to come back with a new life. And I mean, there's a market for it. So there is Mm -hmm. definitely. Um, So that was kind of the inspiration behind this podcast was just kind of sit down with Lindsay, the thrifting expert, and kind of pick her brain a little bit and see if she can give me and other young entrepreneurs um, any insight on creating your own business um, and kind of where to start going from that. 
Um, so like Lindsay said, she has a business, Trends by Lens. Um, we plug that on Instagram, at Trends by Lens. <laughs> Make sure you go check it out. Um, so Lindsay, just I know you kind of gave a little synopsis of your business, but um, like, what, did, what do you do and why do you do it? Yeah. So I told you before, the business is mostly secondhand, um, some vintage, but um, I try and thrift clothes, whether that's, you know, from a store like Goodwill, Salvation Army, or on Instagram, there's a huge market for it. I thrift things and then I either repurpose them or I resell them depending on what their value is. That includes clothes, home goods. I've recently started making jewelry. Yes, um, super cool. Super fun. Yes. I've been loving doing that. Um, but I do it because I feel like there is a huge need for it. Um, not only like with our generation, but in generations to come, just to help the environment. And especially with the turmoil that like the fashion industry is in how it's kind of been going downhill and people are just overproducing is kind of terrible. So that's kind of what launched me into starting Trends by Lens. I feel like um, as of recently, maybe in the last two, three years, that's been like a huge conversation among at least our generation. I don't know if older generations have necessarily been having that conversation either. Um, but I know that I recently saw a statistic that said 75% of the clothes in Goodwill end up in a landfill and that's just in goodwill and all of those clothes do come from like fast fashion brands for the most part mm -hmm. so I feel like that kind of gives a little bit of an idea of like the problem on hand right and like how you are using your business to solve it question for those who might not know what is fast fashion either of you yeah um so fast fashion is we have a lot of big companies Shein, H&M, Fashion Nova, anything along those lines of companies that will mass produce um, clothes very quickly uh, to keep up with whatever the trend is, the current trend um, could be under the category of fast fashion. Mm -hmm. I know like a lot of times companies will look what's on the runway mm -hmm. of like fall 2020 or whatever. And then like, as soon as like they see that they're like sending information to their production to like right. get this certain top made mm -hmm. and then we'll see that top out in stores probably like three months later and like it probably took the fashion designers I don't know I don't Years. know specific <laughs> time but a lot longer to like come up with the design create the design mm -hmm. and then sell the design so that's kind of fast fashion's thing it's just obviously it's, it's fast. fast fashion <laughs> Um, so that's kind of like the problem that you had that you mm -hmm. saw, um, and yes. you were kind of wanting to solve it. When did you start seeing this problem and when did it like kind of highlight in your brain that, oh, I can do something that can change this? Yeah. Um, I probably started seeing this issue. It was when I was in college and it wasn't that long ago. So probably right around the time I started Trends by Lens, it's like two and a half years ago, right when COVID mm -hmm. happened. Yeah. Um, lots of time in your house yeah, to think, lots of time <laughs> to think, to find new hobbies. And I kind of just had a epiphany that we have way too many clothes and the way we purchase clothes and the way we consume things is like always in a mindset of overconsumption. Um, so yeah, definitely gave me something to think about. Um, and that's kind of where the problem solving started. Right. So while some were in their house learning <laughs> to braid, you were in your yes. house learning to change the world. I was trying. I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. I love that. Um, so obviously you've had thrifting experience in the past, correct? Or did you just kind of, I don't, I don't sense that that came <laughs> just randomly to you. It, so yeah. How long have you been thrifting? And like, I don't know, what do you like about thrifting? Um, I did thrift a little before I started my business. I just thrifted for myself, though. I would, you know, it was a fun activity you can go do with friends. Even even to everyone listening, like, that is just an activity you can do on a date with friends. Right. Like, you can do it anytime. And it's fun. Yeah. You go and you can make an outfit out of all these discarded clothes. Mm -hmm. And you never know what you might find. I think that's right. the fun draw of it. Yeah. Is, like, the mystery. 
Um, but so I did thrift a little bit before and it, uh, I didn't really think I had a trained eye for it Mm -hmm. because I honestly think that anyone can go in and they can thrift. It's not a me versus you thing or a talent that I have that you don't. Mm -hmm. I truly think that anyone could do what I'm doing. Is it patience? It is. It is a little (laughs) bit of patience. You have to go in with a open mind Mm -hmm. and definitely patience. Yeah. Cause I feel like I walk into Goodwill and I sometimes feel so overwhelmed because I don't know (laughs) where to start and like all of the jeans look the same (laughs) and I don't know, it can get overwhelming. Yes, absolutely. So I feel like patience is definitely needed, but I agree. It is a super fun activity. Mm -hmm. I know that me and my friends will go and get a cup of coffee on like a Saturday morning and then we'll spend our morning at Goodwill yeah, I'm just shopping around. I mean, you can pull it to like, you could find the ugliest outfit possible mm-hmm. and like make that fun or you can like make it fun by finding really cool clothes. Exactly. Yeah. I recently did a paper last semester about, um, it was a class about clothes. Um, and my final project was to go into Goodwill and pick um, a bunch of different like garments of clothing and then write stories about them. Mm. And so that, since I did that, every time I go to Goodwill, <laughs> I'm like making up little stories in my head about mm-hmm. like, oh, Alicia wore this to her <laughs> wedding, you know, that kind of stuff. So I feel like that's kind of also like a fun activity that I include yeah. in my Goodwill thrifting when I do that too. Um, so you realize the problem during COVID. Um, obviously you've had like a f- passion about clothes, Probably your whole life, or am I just making that up? I actually did not have a passion for clothes my whole life, which is kind of weird. That This hobby, and it really came out of nowhere. I used to be the person that would go to the mall and just buy the first thing that I saw on the mannequin. I was like, this will do, this will <laughs> suffice. I really don't care that much. Mm-hmm. So, sure, it's mine. Um, there wasn't any creativity to that. Um, which I hate, like what you wear should represent you in some form. And I think people don't realize that like your outfits can be fun. If you want them to be fun, they can be neutral. They can be all red and you know, it's whatever you want. Um, but I think as I dove deeper into my own creative journey and this journey on self-discovery I kind of figured out that my outfits can reflect who I am and I was less scared of showing that right I feel like growing up fashion was and it still is for some people Mm -hmm. but I feel like our generation has been kind of shifting the conversation a little bit but there was all these rules that you had to follow Mm -hmm. you know no (laughs) white pants after labor Labor day Day. Yeah. yeah Um, you can't mix navy blue and black, (laughs) brown and black don't go well together. Mm -hmm. Um, all of these different, um, like rules and stuff. Um, and I feel like, I don't know if it's since the pandemic and like Mm -hmm. people were at home and they're like, I need to feel fun (laughs) and flirty in my outfit right now while I'm just sitting watching TV at my house. (laughs) But I feel like a lot of these like fashion rules have kind of gone out the window Mm -hmm. and like people are just like you said, using their fashion as like a creative means to show who they are, how they feel, Mm -hmm. what they do, you know, that kind of stuff, which I feel like is really, really cool because I feel like that started with your hair, like your haircut, and then it went to your clothes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It always starts somewhere and then it kind of just like travels throughout your body, I feel like. (laughs) Right. Um, So shifting back a little bit to your business, um, what does it kind of look like to make money through thrifting and through your yeah. business. Yeah. So most of the things, I mean, anyone who's been into a thrift store, you've obviously seen the price tag. Um, the clothes, I would say, are not that expensive. They're probably in the 2 to $7 range, depending on where you're shopping. Um, so normally what I do is I will, like, purchase a piece of clothing and I will either resell it as it is if it's, like, good to go. Um, or I will like repurpose it in some way, whether that's cutting it, um, adding something to it, making it a new piece. And from there I will like, uh, make the price a little bit more. So if you have like a $7 dress, you could resell that for 
maybe twelve, mm-hmm. fifteen dollars, depending right. on what the material is, what mm-hmm. it looks like, and I guess your demand for the dress. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously that can get difficult because some people don't see the draw in thrifted clothes when they can just go, I guess, buy a new one, mm-hmm. quote. Right. Um, but I don't know. I feel like there's always something special in repurposed clothes. There is. I feel like it kind of goes back to like there. I mean, if you think about it, like you buy a dress from Goodwill mm-hmm. and you can think about who owned the dress, mm-hmm. like how many people own the dress. Was right. it, you know, you know, let's say Jessica brought the dress into Goodwill. Like was the dress Jessica's mom's <laughs> right. that she like passed down to her? Mm-hmm. And like what big events did the piece of clothing like right see and experience yeah. and what monumental moments was the dress like on the person I don't know maybe that's just like such a cheesy way it of goes looking back at to your it, paper but, right <laughs> I just, it's just so interesting to me how I don't know our items mm-hmm. hold like meaning right and then they continue meaning that's why I love thrifting yeah it's so fun yeah um do you feel like like you said it's kind of like some people don't see the vision. So there's specific clientele that you mm-hmm. are reaching out to people that like to thrift people that see the vision, obviously. That's about it. There's mm-hmm. really no secret science to how I find my clientele. I just put out what I am passionate about mm-hmm. and hope that the right clientele finds me. Right. So are you just on Instagram or are you, do you have your own website yet? I don't actually. Okay. That, that's something to put in the works. Mm-hmm. I am just on Instagram right now. And every now and then I'll do a pop-up shop. Um, there's one here in Lexington called the Drunken Flea. And it's got like 50 plus vintage vendors. Mm-hmm. Highly recommend you check it out. They do them like four times a year. When are you going to be at the next one? I oh, feel like it's coming it up, is isn't coming it? Up. It's uh, <laughs> actually August 13th. Okay. All right. Well, maybe you'll see some of the listeners there. Maybe. Come introduce yourself. Yeah. (laughs) Do you have a lot of repeat clients or is is mostly everybody just one off? Uh, I would say I do have a lot of uh, repeating clients, which is really sweet and fun to see that they keep coming back. Mm -hmm. Um, And they're like always the first to want to buy something or to comment on something. So the clientele does stay very loyal. Um, And then every now and then you'll have a new person that shows up on the scene and then they end up sticking around. Mm -hmm. So it's really fun to see that. Right. To see the cycle kind of. Yeah. To see the cycle. Right. I feel like it would feel good to know that the people that are buying from you obviously feel the same way that you do and like have a passion about Mm -hmm. thrifting and wanting to change the fast fashion world and. It's very cool. Yeah, because when you do, it's easy to get caught up on, I am one person. How can I make a change in any of this? But to see the clientele and to see the change that they want to make is Mm -hmm. very heartening. Yeah. Um, Because you know that change will be made. Like once all these people come together, something's going to happen. One step at a time. (laughs) No need to rush. (laughs) Exactly. Um, What ultimately, like, gave you the courage to make this leap and, like, to start Trends by Lens? Mm, That's honestly something I don't think about that often. It could have been a mixture of things. Like, I had so much free time and I was ready to do something. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of combining passion and free time. And I was like, I don't see why I couldn't just do this Mm -hmm. or just start this up. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, but might as well just put it out there. And if people come, then they come. Right. What would you say to somebody who, like you said earlier, you said, sometimes we get in the mindset of we're only one person and we can't change the world. Mm -hmm. So what... I feel like maybe you had that mindset at some mm-hmm. point. And then what would you tell people that have that mindset that want to like <laughs> possibly make a leap and change the world a little bit? Yeah, I would say uh, drop that mindset altogether, <laughs> please. Um, throw it out the window. Please just like take it, throw it out the window. Because <laughs> if we all, let's say we all had that mindset of I am only one person. What can I do? 
nothing's ever going to get done. Right. Um, but if one person wants to make a change, that's going to spread to someone else. Then they're going to tell their friends about it and they're going to tell someone else. Mm -hmm. And a random stranger is going to hear about it somehow. And already you have 20 people. Right. And from those 20 people, they'll each tell 20 more mm -hmm. than you have a, a whole large group. Right. So I think just throwing that kind of I can't do anything mindset out the window and changing it to I don't know what's going to happen, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to know until I try it. Yeah. So I might as well. Right. I love that. And also, I feel like we're just more powerful together than yeah. we are separated. Yeah, absolutely. So that goes along with that. Mm -hmm. um, so what was once you decided that you were going to go ahead mm -hmm. and start Trends by Wounds, <laughs> What was kind of like your first steps um, or like the activities leading up to it mm -hmm. until you were like established? Yeah. So first few things I did was I created an Instagram. Um, I had already thrifted prior to that, um, whatever my first drop was going to be. So uh, a drop is just like whatever clothes I put out. Sometimes I will make it a series I'll make them go together or I'll just put like a bunch of jeans on a drop mm -hmm. but I had already gotten a drop together I started the Instagram and I just took some photos of my friends in the clothes it was like dang everyone looks fire mm -hmm. I hope people buy this <laughs> stuff <laughs> um then I posted it on Instagram and that's kind of how it started mm -hmm. how often did you or do you thrift to keep up with everything? Um, it kind of goes in waves. I would say recently, not that often. Probably once every two to three weeks. Okay. But in the height of when people are buying and when I'm posting, it could be multiple times a week, mm -hmm. like two to three times a week. Do you normally go to the same spots or do you switch it up? I switch it up, but I'm an avid... Uh, I love my stores, so I do go to the same ones. Uh, I love Salvation Army. Uh, Goodwill, we have a lot of Goodwills in Lexington. We do. So mm -hmm. I do try and switch it up and check them all out because they all have great stuff. That's great. Um, what has it been any, like, have you come across any challenges over the course of the past couple years? Because you've been doing it, what, for two and a half years? Mm, just about. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. My biggest challenge probably has been knowing what to price things at that sounds like a weird challenge but uh there was always this saying it was like one man's trash is another man's treasure yeah. or woe man <laughs> <laughs> i guess that too uh -huh. um and i always think about that when i'm thrifting because that is so true like people have donated this stuff because they don't want it or something's happened mm -hmm. in their life where they just have to give it away mm -hmm. but to me or to someone else that could be their next favorite item that could be yeah. something they use every day um so every not everyone is going to look at that and want to buy from me or think that the price is worth it mm -hmm. and that's okay like I understand that but that has definitely been a challenge of people not being willing to pay what I am putting something priced at or they try and bargain with me on something that's like not something to be bargained about. Mm -hmm. So that's been a very good learning process of just how to price things well, um, but also knowing when to take a stand and like not let up on something right. just because someone is asking mm -hmm. for it. Right. People are a little bit greedy, I found. Yeah, and like they are. I'm sure that you put a lot of time and energy into the stuff that you do put out. So, um, what? How have you stayed? How have you not been discouraged by like people coming to you and saying like your prices are too high or whatever their complaints are? Mm. Uh, well, I do just want to say that. I have been discouraged. Mm -hmm. So don't think that I am <laughs> superhuman who never gets discouraged because that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also okay to be discouraged. That's a very normal and natural emotion. 
Um, but just being able to identify that and being able to take that and turn it around into pushing you into growing into something better mm -hmm. and like not letting it get you down for too long. That kind of segues into my next question, which is what is your biggest piece of advice that you would give to another young entrepreneur trying to start out? Someone like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, I would say to just do it. Just go for it. Take the leap. Make the jump. <laughs> Whatever it is. It's going to be scary and that's okay. Um, you can't keep moving or you can't excel if you're staying in your comfort zone and to step out of it is going to be scary but it's always worth it mm -hmm. beautifully said oh, thank you. <laughs> Garrett do you want to input anything <laughs> for your um yeah. advice for <laughs> anything maybe not my advice I, I was really intrigued by the last question I didn't plan it <laughs> <laughs> so I think one thing about me being nosy, I'd like to know, it comes mm -hmm. from a, a semi-employer-esque perspective mm -hmm. and others who listen who might think, hey, I want to hire my first intern or I might want to mm -hmm. be in a spot where I can refer people or something in, in that vein. So you two are both, again, high achieving, high performing individuals. That's why you're part of this team. And we know that game attracts game. So you're, you're both, <laughs> you're both very sharp. And again, you're talking about what you do extracurricularly, curricularly, <laughs> that's a big word. What you guys <laughs> do outside of, of your time with our, with our team. My long winded question is now going to be a question. So is there anything that you learned and maybe applied into your role here that you actually took that same practice and applied to trends by lens, whether that's, Hey, I'm using this Google sheet to do X, Y, Z, I'm following up with my Instagram followers and customers in this vein because I've done it here. Is there something you learned similar to her question that was maybe an aha moment or a very practical mm. um, tool or piece of software that you started using for trends? That's a great question. It was also long-winded. I do that, I do <laughs> that too right. often. I'm sorry. Um, there's a lot that I've taken from this internship Honestly, something that I have a hard time with is staying on task and having my goals written out. And Awesome Inc. did a really good job at showing us how to lay those out and how to achieve them daily. Um, we, have, <laughs> we have a top five, which is it's every day that we're here. So Monday through Friday, we write our five top tasks. I would say for the mm -hmm. day, um, kind of an order from like most daunting to least daunting. And you check those off as you go. And I've definitely taken that into other areas of my life. It helps me get stuff done, helps me map out my day. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very useful. That's good stuff. I have one more question. And if you want to wrap anything up, Kara, okay. feel free. The world's your oyster. <laughs> Actually, I don't even understand why they say that, but that maybe I'll go on Wikipedia and find out later. Yeah. I've oh. looked it up before, okay. and the explanation on Google does not <laughs> answer the question for you. Okay, I'll just ask my grand <laughs> I'll ask someone who's older than me. Uh, yeah, last question, Linz. And actually, Kara, you can join Caramel. Carousel. <laughs> Carousel. Yeah, yeah there you, go. you can join in too. I, I would love to hear your input as well. Looking back, you're both recent college grads. If you could do the whole college experience, over again, or you could go back to day one of the Awesome Inc. internship with Team Alpha. What would you, what would you differently knowing what you both know now? Oof. And if you need to sit and simmer a little bit, I can totally buy some time. Should I answer both questions? Like yeah, do, beginning do, do of want. college experience and Awesome Inc. internship. Mm -hmm. Up to you. I feel like both of my answers would be similar, but if I can go back to beginning of my college experience. I would have just tried things earlier. Like I wouldn't have, not that I wouldn't have been scared because I still would have been scared, mm -hmm. but just pushing through that to try new things and meet new people. Cause I got to do that, but it wasn't until halfway in to college. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I had to miss out on so many things because I waited so long 
and because of COVID. COVID mm-hmm. kind of snatched that time away from us. Yeah. But definitely don't be afraid to jump into something that is the unknown. Same with the internship. That was a really cool experience because I didn't really know what I was getting into. But I still jumped in with an open mind and it was great. It was awesome. Uh, I met so many cool people and I feel like we're still learning to this day. We're mm-hmm. what, seven, no, six months in maybe? Seven months. Seven yeah. months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're st- like, we still learn stuff every yeah. day. Mm-hmm. I feel like mine would be similar to Lindsay's about the college. Um, I On one of the past podcast episodes that I listened to, you said something or you guys were talking about the more that you do, the more luck that you make for yourself. Mm. And I think that my freshman year, I did come in really scared Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to try new clubs or didn't have the courage to do that. And I feel like I would have tried to do that. Um, I feel like I would have succeed. Not that I didn't succeed in college, but as my major more to like include myself into Mm -hmm. certain clubs and like learn different aspects. Like there was a bunch of different advertising clubs that we could have been a part of um, through the ISC program. And like, I was always too scared to do that because I didn't want to go alone or, you know, whatever. Um, So I feel like that would be a big thing, but also all of the productivity that Mm -hmm. we've learned throughout the um, internship, I would have taken a lot of that and saved myself a lot of anxiety, <laughs> yes. stress, and breakdowns from the little miss pr- procrastination that's inside of me. Um, <laughs> What's the biggest comparison you can make between your time here in the professional world, you know, quote unquote, in the startup system, ecosystem? Startup system sounds like a galaxy. <laughs> that's weird. In the, yeah, in the startup space versus the educational routes of college. What's, what's the biggest thing you got? You both can say, wow, they're different because of fill in the blank. The real life experience Mm -hmm. that you get. I feel like all of the classes that I took were you get this book and Mm -hmm. you read these things and we'll maybe throw in an exercise here and there and you can make this execution and then go ahead and present it. But otherwise (laughs) we're just going to go ahead and just check all these boxes, get your grades, and then we're going to give you your degree and you're going to kind of be pushed out into the world without any like real world knowledge of like how to communicate with people, the Mm -hmm. language to use. I don't even know. I just, I feel like through the internship, we learned what it actually looks and feels like to be Mm -hmm. in like the real world, quote unquote, um, instead of just being in a classroom yeah. And especially with COVID, I feel like that ruined a lot of, not ruined, but it just hindered a lot of the education process because yep. half of our time at UK was spent online. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe other people would have a different answer than I would because they spent a lot more time in the classroom. But I don't know. I couldn't have said that better. <laughs> I think I, yeah, I fully agree with that. We had so much real experience here in the internship and we got to work with the whole team as you would in a job setting i mean mm-hmm. this is a job right and it's a job <laughs> i said it's a job all capitals um but everyone here at awesome inc this is their day job this is what they do and we get this sneak peek into that and we get to help them with stuff and be on tasks with them and learn how to plan an event. Yes. And do a podcast. Yes. And actually create <laughs> like stuff that goes on like social media. Right. Like, we don't, we didn't do any, at least I didn't. No. I feel like it would have been cool to like partner with yeah. a brand or something through one of our classes and like actually produce content that would be posted or something. Yeah. From like our major point of view. Mm-hmm. But yeah. <laughs> That's great. I like that. That was a nice, subtle, subtle ending. You want to wrap it up? You want to wrap it up? You want me to? What are you feeling? You can wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yes, yes, crush that. Well, if you're listening to this podcast, make sure you reach out to Kara Mel at Instagram. <laughs> that, hey, you should make your, I almost said your gamer tag. That's hilarious. <laughs> make your handle that. Uh-huh. Um, and check out Trends by Lens. Can you give yourself one more final plug? Yep, that's trends period, period. by lens on Instagram. 
Great. Trends by lens. Uh, I'm a size medium. Just <laughs> I'll just, keep that in mind. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Well, again, uh, great to hear from two of our rising Team Alpha interns, stars, insert <laughs> very complimentary word because it's very true. <laughs> and if you are listening to this, you know where to find us, 348 East Main Street, downtown Lexington, Kentucky. Just stop on by, grab some Devil Stuff Oreos. And uh, again, if you are looking for an internship or you are someone who's hiring for interns, or maybe looking for your first couple team members, we have plenty of amazing, amazing, I'm looking at two of them, (laughs) um, just talented people that have come through our network and our team. So reach out to me, g at awesomeink.org. And uh, guess what? We'll catch you here later, alligator. Bye, guys. Bye. In a wild crocodile. (laughs) Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Awesome Inks Podcast. And another quick thank you to Lee Rosevere and a few members from our community who provide the music that you hear in this show. Lastly, give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz, or even better, come on down to our space. Come be a part of our community and get plugged in and let's start something awesome together. You guys rock. We'll see you next time.